Good morning, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, October 8th, 2025 is the date. 11.25 a.m. That's West Coast time here in California. Latest activity shows a 1.6 uh, across the uh, Permian Basin there of Texas out in the oil fields. Still seeing uh, quite a bit of movement out there. All right, so let's take a look here at the uh, last 24 hours here of earthquake activity. Uh, it does look like we got a little bit of newer movement there into the West Coast, California area. So let's go see what we got going on here. It looks like we had a 3.2 earthquake along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault about 2 o'clock this morning. A number of other earthquakes in there as well since then. Uh, I don't see any migration down south here towards the Parkfield segment, by the way, which is locked and loaded. Uh, for at least a six-pointer, uh, this section of the San Andreas Fault normally sees ruptures of a 6.0 or higher every 20 to 22 years. And our last one was back in 2004. So the math tells us that we should be getting close to seeing another event. And, of course, the math down there across the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault uh, tells us that we're overdue for a big earthquake down here. Uh, but for now, as far as anything above 2.5, that's going to go to the um, earthquake there around Pinnacles. Also, it looks like a couple other scattered quakes out here above that level, including the latest one just off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault near Desert Hot Springs. Uh, that's just off this little bend area in the uh, southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, I don't believe that's anywhere near the swarming area that we've had here recently. There's been little swarms up there on the uh, uh, Big Bear City area had a decent amount of earthquake activity here in the last week about 25 earthquakes of various magnitudes nothing new to report there today but watching this one it's again it's right off that strain bin that's where you you would expect to see some transfer of that pressure uh, when things are you know pretty well locked and loaded and it, San Andreas faults one of the uh, uh, more dangerous faults out here and definitely uh, I feel like we're gonna see something on that soon Looks like a little earthquake there on the Malibu Coast Fault. A little thrust fault out there. I shouldn't say little. It's fairly lengthy out here. That's capable of a large earthquake in itself. 1.7 uh, this morning, about 9 o'clock or so this morning. Northern California, not so much going on up here. Although uh, we got two earthquakes. Low magnitude 2 range. Somewhat deep underneath this area. Uh, that's a, a fairly deep earthquake there. More than likely associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, I know we got mountains up here, but at 13 miles deep, that is associated with the general strain with this subduction zone here. Is it's uh, the Juan de Fuca plate or the Gorda plate here is being shoved down underneath this area of Northern California. Uh, trimmer map last night showed us that we had a uh, uh, mostly northern end event with 492 episodes of slow slip events there. A little bit down here across the southern coast of Oregon last night, or yesterday, I should say. We'll get today's data a little bit later on this evening. Uh, looking up into the Pacific Northwest here, just uh, really nothing since last night. I find that hard to believe. Not even a small microquake, no earthquakes at all. Well, let's go see. See if there's anything going on here at our typical zones. Uh, for one, Mount St. Helens. We'll go up here at the dome area and check out the latest recorded views here of the uh, web recorder and if it's going to work there we go um i don't see anything of any major value but there's still definitely some very small microquake activity occurring here that's going to be these earthquakes some of them may be relatively deep underneath the area some may be shallow um if you look up here there's definitely what looks like some earthquake activity at a distance there uh, but just continuing to watch it nothing major building up yet but you know it's interesting here have we we've had a swarm of earthquakes up at Mount Rainier and also uh, Mount St. Helens and around Mount Hood as well all uh, volcanoes there associated with the uh, Cascades here's Mount Rainier I'd say uh, there's a number of earthquakes out here as well nowhere what we've seen back in July but you know this is still some earthquake activity stirring up out here. Very small earthquake activity, but uh, earthquake activity nonetheless. Here's Mount Hood. Uh, we'll check out Palmer Lift up here and see what's showing up today on the uh, seismogram. See? 
There's definitely some earthquake activity out here as well. This is at Mount Hood. Those are definitely earthquakes. I don't think they're ice quakes. I, you know, let's go back here and see. I just want to pick out a day around the 9th or so, see what that looked like. Well, that was overblown, but you di didn't see any earthquake activity out there. Let me go to the next day. Let me find a different <laughs> different time here because that, uh, let's try August 12th here. I don't know what was going on with all that uh, being blown up there, but anyway, I, from what I can see, there's still definitely what looks like some earthquake activity out there across Mount Hood that's not you know a generator turning on is not it, generators don't look like that it'd be a solid reading and then it just automatically drop off when the generator or something shuts off but that's you know what looks like earthquake activity and that's at mount hood uh, yellowstone national park up here in wyoming a couple more earthquakes being noted here on the graph this morning or on the chart so i guess we better go take a look over there as well See what's going on there today across Yellowstone. Winter is closing in. A couple smaller quakes, and I believe those are the ones being reported as well this morning. Nothing big. I don't see any, any uh, increasing amount of earthquake activity out there, and that's at uh, Yellowstone National Park there. Uh, make sure the bells are off. We're good on that. Texas, man, just get a lot of oil field operations out there and uh, earthquake activity that is associated with it all throughout the Permian Basin also down here across the San Antonio area got a decent swarm there some up in Oklahoma uh, one earthquake here in the New Madrid seismic zone a 2.1 at 4 o'clock this morning that uh, is right smack dab in the middle of the uh, that intraplate boundary out here and of course if you don't know I'm sure most of us know that 1811 1812 had a series of large earthquakes, upper seven, some say lower eight magnitude earthquakes out there. Something like that today, ooh, man, that would not be good. But, you know, that was over 200 years ago, so I'm sure it'll happen again. Just don't know when exactly. Uh, some earthquake activity also off the coast here of Guatemala into the uh, Middle America Trench. Looks like right in the center of that. That area obviously capable of producing some uh, big earthquakes as well, but for now... Just a uh, couple small quakes there. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench, a lot of this from yesterday here. There's, why is this absent? It's question mark here. Hmm. Uh, but there has been a couple twos and threes up here along the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, nothing major going on for now. 3.4 out there in uh, Hawaii, one of the latest quakes. Northwestern edge here of the Big Island. We're getting a lot of these deeper quakes here. This. This area underneath Pahala, though, uh, about 18 miles deep or so underneath this area, is associated with the whole hot spot and the plumbing system down below. These other earthquakes that are a little bit shallower, you'll see them period periodically around the Big Island, are associated in general with the weight of the Hawaii Islands upon the Pacific Plate, right? So you got all this extra uh, magma coming up and forming new island chains, and that, that weight out there on the Pacific Plate itself can create earthquakes in general around the area and we have been seeing quite a bit of that recently here uh, I don't think we got anything changing uh, as far as you know the rinse and repeat cycle there at Hawaii but uh, let's go double check and see what we have here today see if it's working which it is still going up here that's the inflation chart the blue line so, rinse and repeat cycle. We're waiting on episode, what, 35, I believe, here. It's hard to keep track of them. There's been so many, but it's been an ongoing deal since uh, December of <coughs> last year. Excuse me. Uh, but I still think, though, we have a couple days or a few days here to go uh, before we reach the level observed in our last couple eruptions here. This is the inflation maximum before the eruption occurs. All right, uh, glancing out here across the uh, world view of things, uh, Mediterranean region, a little bit quieter today. Some twos and threes, nothing big going on. Here's an earthquake from last night there in the South Sandwich Trench. Uh, definitely some, you know, some decent uptick there off the coast of Guatemala. It does look like it's extending north here 
uh, towards the Mexico area and worked. It looks like it maybe even worked its way up here across the uh, Pinnacles area, the creeping section to where we're at right now off the coast of Canada there. That, uh, that's a little 3.4 up there. Nothing big. But definitely got some adjustment trying to take place out here. Uh, New Zealand still holding steady with some threes down there. Nothing big happening. A uh, little bit quieter out here today. I know we still got some movement center portion here of this area. Uh, within the cluster zone. Got... Uh, the Kamchatka Trench up here seeing a little bit more activity. Got three earthquakes up here. Well, yeah, it looks like three. Two from yesterday, one from today, but I think we got some smaller quake activity out there, I believe. Should be. Uh, that's really not showing up here. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit because it looks like I'm off slightly on my time frame there. Uh, but... For the most part, fairly uh, just kind of. I feel like I'm waiting on things out here. It almost feels like we're waiting for something bigger to take place out here. I don't know. I got that weird, odd feeling. Been super active, and then uh, it calms down, and then it will really start kicking up again. It's been uh, doing that here in the last couple months for sure. Uh, Alaska, some earthquake activity up there. I'm really not seeing anything major going on. Uh, let's go back here to the 2.5 model. Uh, a little bit more active than normal, including a four-pointer out there close to the Cook Inlet area. <clears throat> That's about 58 miles deep or so underneath the region. Number of twos and uh, looks like maybe a couple other threes in there as well. So yeah, I'd say definitely some uptick going on out there across the Alaska area. Nothing big though for now, but just stay on guard. Um... This, I think I shared this last night, uh, the link to the Axial Seamount off the coast here of Oregon. There's a, a number of interesting stuff here that you can look at with regards to the uh, that Seamount, uh, including, um, well, there's pressure and tilt, all sorts of stuff that may, you know, has to do with the... Uh, uh, that seamount out there that uh, a lot of news agencies have been covering. I'm trying to get the webcam to work out there, but uh, anyway, there's if you wanted to look at some information in regards to um, the seafloor height and tilt and whatnot, it's kind of neat to look at. There's a lot of stuff here you can go through. Uh, I'll include this again on the um, updated video description, but I don't want to go over that right now. Uh, space weather activity, make sure we got the rec most recent image, which we do. We do have a coronal hole facing us right now. Center disc of the sun. Also, it uh, looks like a fairly lengthy filament here. Look how long that thing is. It almost, it does. It stretches all the way up here to the north. You can follow it all the way down here across the globe here, across the uh, sun. That's pretty crazy. Uh, sometimes those can blast off as well. But uh, 85 right now is the coronal hole that's facing us we'll see uh you know earthquake activity doesn't ramp up because seems to be a little association every time that gets into position there as far as a massive coronal hole that we see some elevated earthquake activity so we'll watch this it's perfectly lined up it's a sizable uh, coronal hole um if earthquake activity is going to kick up it should definitely do it with this one directly facing earth and you can't really say yeah it's going to take five days from now for it to affect the planets or to affect the earth you know the high-speed solar wind stream will be here in about 48 to 72 hours but uh you know I'll, I'll give that lee away i'm trying to keep a total tally here in terms of space weather events related to elevated earthquake activity here on the planet we'll see what happens with that uh, as far as sunspot activity goes we are continuing to dwindle down here Really not uh, looking at anything major going on here for the uh, sunspot areas. Pretty quiet. The um, flare threat is continuing to drop. 35% chance here for an M flare. These guys are still stuck at 10%, but uh, I'm thinking 1% or less. We're way down there uh, in the B flare category at a B6.0. Things are fairly stable. 
All right, uh, what else do we have here? Let's give a quick gander at the, uh, can I still use that word? word? A quick gander out here at the uh, <clears throat> next five close approach asteroids. <coughs> Missy Mimi's and the kids are sick here. It feels like I'm starting to get a little bit of it, but I'm trying to think positive and hopefully push it away. Uh, 83 or 835,000 miles here for a, a 87 foot airplane size asteroid coming in today, but that's way out there. All these other ones are millions of miles away. Quick glance here at the uh, Space Weather or uh, Storm Prediction Center, excuse me. Thunderstorm activity, that's just about it. Nothing of severe nature. No tornado threat, no wind, no hail. At least according to the Storm Prediction Center here. Yeah, take a look here at the weather models. Long term trending. Got uh, well, California here. It's got some storm systems. Ooh, I like that. Right about Monday, Tuesday, early next week there. We got a, a decent low pressure trough bringing some moisture. And it looks like some snow up there in the higher elevation. Ooh, I do like that. Maybe another one behind that. Either way, you know, I can tell you the patterns are definitely switching up out here. Uh, the jet stream is dropping lower and lower, and of course our chances of precipitation and snow come into the forecast. Here's a look at the total accumulated precipitation runs out here. Pacific Northwest is getting slammed with rain and snow up there. That's very common, but it looks like a little bit of rain for everyone out here, including some tropical moisture coming in there to the uh, desert southwest. As far as any uh, snowfall, Let's see what we got here for snowfall potential. Definitely up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, up around Mount Lassen, Mount Shasta for sure, all through the Cascades. Nothing for the eastern portion of the country, but uh, it does look like the west here getting in on some a uh, little bit of moisture out there. Not a whole, not a whole lot, but a uh, little bit of snow. Uh, there's an earthquake there on Russia that pretty much flatlined that seismograph station so i can guarantee you that's probably going to be a five or so let's see i don't see anything showing up yet yeah i didn't get it on my did not get it on my application my uh or my app i should say my i use quake feed which is a fairly handy dandy uh, app when it comes to reporting earthquake activity you can set it up to uh, do notifications, send notifications to you in the event there's an earthquake around the world. But uh, it's hard to hard to tell where uh, or how big this one is. I don't see it showing up on Japan. Of course, I don't even. S there's Japan right here. This is Russia around the Kamchatka area. But uh, normally, if this is going to be a big event, this is going to show up on Japan as well shortly thereafter. But I don't see anything really showing up right now, and it's not being reported. Let me see if the EMSC here is reporting it. I mean, it should show up on the globe because it's the EMSC data on there as well. Yeah, nothing showing up yet, but uh, that's definitely what looks like uh, an earthquake. If it's something bigger, I'll include it there in the uh, description of this video. But for now, we got, uh, I think we got everything covered out here. We'll just continue to keep an eye on things here. Have yourself a, uh, a wonderful Wednesday. And we'll see you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, folks.